Today's episode is brought to you by On The Clock. On The Clock is a web-based time tracking software providing accuracy, time theft prevention, and compliance assistance to over 30,000 customers, and they've been around since 2004. So for those of you that are offering accounting services and bookkeeping, let On The Clock do the selling of your services for you. And here's what I mean. Number one, you get a free account and you become certified in the software in less than two hours. Then you will be listed as a trusted pro on their marketplace page, giving you opportunities to be available for their 10,000 active customers visible to you and your services. So sign up today, try it out, give it a whirl. It's totally free. Free account over at ontheclock.com and expand your business, save time with your clients and their payroll information that is going to be all in one place while providing discounts on the software to your clients that they would never even get. So number one, you get additional revenue. Number two, the huge thing is, is your company, your firm will be seen by 10,000 active customers that they already have. So give it a whirl on the clock.com and Let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast, where all accountants come to learn all the ways to grow your firm. And when you're in doubt, I am here to help you out. So if you're ready to learn and ready to grow your firm, then you're in the right place to sharpen your skills and increase your revenue. Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast. This is where accounting professionals come to learn all the most efficient and powerful ways that you can grow your firm, sharpen your skills, and even have paths and ways to generate consistent increasing revenue. I cover topics from networking, pricing, finding your ideal clients, how to increase cash flow. And today we're talking about things to actually stop doing right now so you can get paid your worth for the expertise and never give away any more information for free. You'll learn tips, strategies, as well as hear from other personal people. Today, we have Jackie Meyer and other interviewees from successful accounting professionals around the country. So this podcast will show you exactly how to create the business and life of your dreams full of abundance. So today on the Abundant Accountant Podcast, we have a very special guest and Someone I know personally, she is the founder of the concierge CPA firm. She specializes in providing innovative tax strategies and coaching programs to executive clientele for a high return on investment. She has recently been honored and included in the 40 under 40 CPA advisor winner. She is the American Institute of Certified Tax Coach member of the year last year. And you can read more about Jackie at her LinkedIn profile. And she's also a really lifetime long learner that has a, she's actually completing a doctorate in strategic leadership from Regent University. And she also told me today she's hired four coaches. So Jackie is a go-getter and she definitely has a passion for coaching firm owners, just like some of you on exactly what to do to become more efficient provide a higher ROI and work with those ideal clients and apply tax strategies that most of your clients typically need. But before we welcome Jackie to the show, I would love to invite each of you, if you haven't done so yet, to take a quick second and please leave me a rating and a written review on Apple Podcast and subscribe to the show if you haven't yet. I do love hearing from you and reading the reviews, so I would greatly appreciate that. It does only take about 10 seconds. And if you're feeling a little frustrated and stressed with everything that's going on in the world and you have like no control over who you're working with and you don't believe you could ever get high paying clients, then you're probably like a lot of the other accountants who I've worked with and you feel like you're on a cash flow roller coaster ride. And I do have a solution for you. So you can join me at my accountants masterclass over at theabundantaccountant.com and you'll learn ways to feel really confident in positioning yourself as the expert. You'll learn ways to get consistent, high quality clients coming to you and attracting those people who will definitely pay you for what you're worth, no matter how much you charge. 
So you can register for that over at theabundantaccountant.com and I'll see you there. Now let's welcome Jackie to the show. Thank you. Well, it's always awesome to have you here. For those of you that don't know Jackie, she's going to introduce herself again. She has been here with us on the Abundant Accountant uh, podcast before. So today's conversation is going to be more collaborative versus like interview-ish. So I'm really excited for you guys. Take a pen and paper because these are probably the five things you're going to want to quit right now if you're an accountant, which I think all of you are last time I checked. And, uh, you know, you're not going to want to do these going forward. It actually hinders you and we have really great stuff today. But before we start, Jackie, can you share with everyone who you are? Also mention your Facebook group because there's so much support for you guys online in there. It's great. And anything else? Yes, for sure. Hi, everyone. So just me, I'm a CPA firm owner for a decade in South Lake, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas, Fort Worth. I converted my practice to value pricing around tax strategies about four to five years ago. Through that, I was able to triple revenue and equally decrease my time involved in the practice, which was pretty fun. I then started speaking at you know, QuickBooks Connect, other conferences, and coaching others on the concepts at hand to really turbocharge accounting firms to the next level. Um, So that's at theconciergecpa.com. I also organically have just been growing a Facebook group called Accounting Firm Influencers. So search that, answer the little Q&A so I can let you in. We have over 4,000 accountants there where we're talking about all the latest and greatest hot topics in our industry and supporting each other uh, day to day. So um, I also happened to win AICTC of the year last year. So I'm big on tax planning, 40 under 40 for CPA practice advisor the last two years, fingers crossed. I get that again this fall and then uh, been a presenter and, and coach as well. So that's the gist of my practice and me. And we can talk a little bit more about it as we go. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. It sounds like you have no idea what to do in, uh, if you own an accounting firm, so I'm glad I chose you. No, I'm just kidding. Jackie actually really knows what she's doing since she tripled her revenue, decreased the amount of time, and is now helping others do that in a different format than what I do. You know, this is more of like your processes and your flow. So uh, all that technical nitty gritty business development stuff for accountants. So we complement each other. Well, we do. We do. And I love our topic for today because I know I have some stories. I know you have stories. So we're going to be storytelling today. It's like Sesame Street for accountants today. And uh, (laughs) I don't know. I just said that. But I, I think it's because Jackie, my boyfriend and I have watched the documentary on Big Bird. And we watched the documentary on Sesame Street. And I think there's a documentary on Oscar the Grouch. So I think I need to watch that one next. (laughs) Wow. Okay. I need to help find better things for you to do. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm so happy that I have sales classes for all accountants listening. (laughs) That keeps me on track. (laughs) Pretty busy, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm actually spending less than 10 hours a week within my firm. So I'm really at the kind of the level of working on the firm. And I love sharing best practices. And I think these five things to quit right now are really going to resonate with our listeners today. All right. And we're going to get into each five. And just to preface it, I'm sure it's going to feel like, well, Michelle and Jackie, that all sounds really good, but I just don't know how to do it. Or, you know, I've heard that 20 different times from so many different people, but I just can't seem to really get a grasp for it. And you're probably going to feel really overwhelmed and like, how do I even do this? So if you can just think about one thing you can implement today. So Jackie, If you had to say like the number one thing that an accountant listening right now should stop immediately, quit doing right off the bat, what would it be and why? All right. First thing, trying to please everyone. And what really comes to mind with this first one is clients in particular or potential clients for your firm. You know, as I was growing the first few years of my practice when it started in 2010, I was taking on anyone and everyone if they had any kind of startup business, even individual clients at, you know, $300 for a 1040 here or there, just to grow, grow, grow. And what's great about our industry is that we are needed. And I was able to grow very quickly that way. But 
it also violated a lot of my personal principles on boundaries, mm -hmm. on uh, expectations that clients should have as, of, of me as their accountant and expectations I should have of them as clients of mine. And it really kind of created this, you know, muddied water approach of uh, the, the client service relationship. And so I had to take a step back after a few years and think about who was I really serving the best in my practice? What's my niche? Who values me the most? And um, that's when I really started kind of going down this tax strategy path and figuring out that I loved working with executives that were, you know, semi-retired CEOs or CFOs of big companies, already had all the ins and outs of the day-to-day -day knowledge of how financial statements work. But they wanted to put all their trust into our company, Meyer Tax, to really just be that concierge assistant to them day-to-day -day and make sure that all their strategies and compliance work was going well. Yeah, and when we yeah. started remolding in that direction, Michelle, it was just miraculous how much better my personal life, my business life, my staff's lives, and the customer service we were able to provide to our clients became. Yeah, no, and it's, it's huge, right? But someone listening right now, and, and I talk a lot about this, so I'm going to share a story, okay? And this story is from actually a new student of mine who's starting on Monday. Okay, for uh, purposes of this discussion, we're going to call her Susie. And Susie actually does 1040s at like $150. She has grown her business, revenue top lines growing. But like you said, it's, it's super muddy waters. And she, at the end of our conversation, and this might resonate with some of you, you know, fear wasn't there. She's not scared. But when it came to giving the bill to someone or saying the price that she really wanted to charge, that was the freakiest thing for her to do. And, you know, she would just please people. And then she would, I guess, not negotiate, but just settle for whatever the price was that would work for the two of them. And a few of them have been business clients. And she, what we've realized and what we discovered today, actually, when we were talking was she's losing about 3000 per client in total annual revenue by just going down in price and settling. And like you said, pleasing them. And as in an industry, we have to set the expectations, like you said. And for her, it is violating her personal principles. But as an industry, if we keep leaning in and allowing the clients to do this to us, then it, it's just crazy and it, we can't make a change. So all of us together can cohesively make a change slowly. But like you said, we have to stop pleasing everybody. And it's almost better off if we don't take the clients at that rate, because then you're miserable, right? And then it's just like a downward spiral because then it's super muddy water because you're not even happy doing that work. Right, for sure. I mean, we really have to think about it's way more than just business transactions here. It's the value you're placing on yourself as a professional. And yeah. if you don't value yourself, get the education, get the extra CPE, get a coach, get a mentor, whatever you need to do to get yourself in that place where you are bringing substantial value to your clients. Because most accounts mm -hmm. I know do. Well, and here's an exercise, Jackie, that you might even want to do with the people that you're coaching. But I've done this. And, and this is, I'm just going to use Susie the whole time because literally her and I just got off the phone. So it's fresh in my head. But Susie has uh, $70,000 in student loan debt from her master's program. How many of you have a master's, a master's in tax, an MBA, a CPA, an EA? Uh, we all went to the school of hard knocks. So we all have mistakes from that school department. How much have you invested in yourself where now it's like what you're saying, it's time to get paid for that value. How do you value yourself? And that your clients get to pay you for. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. But yeah, at the end of the day, everyone is not for everyone. And you're actually doing a disservice to your clients by continuing relationships that aren't the most beneficial for your practice and for those customers at hand. Yeah, 1000%. Yeah. All right, what's the second thing we all got to 
just kind of put a screeching halt to right now. All not- right. <laughs> Number two is fearing change. So I found in the life cycle of an accounting firm and being an entrepreneur, which I can now claim because I actually have three companies at this point <laughs> um, and uh, growing, which is kind of nuts. Oh, and I'm in a doctorate program. So that's all fun. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, every few years, you really have to take a step back in your practice and reassess what's going well, what's not going well, and figure out like embrace change, like what changes are going to really make us just like the most amazing practice in the world. Yeah, we actually came out with a core value for our firm this last year, where we said we are providing the best tax strategies in the world. That is a really bold statement, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's confidence. Yes, it is. But you know what? Whether we're, I'm, I wouldn't say fake it till we make it because I believe we truly can do that and we are doing that. But it's about just putting it out there, like putting it out there to the world that you are going to succeed at what you say you're going to do. Mm-hmm. So yeah, fearing change, we definitely need to embrace change. Our profession, especially with COVID this year, has been so many changes and it's been a nightmare um, with the government regulations and whatnot. But we have to look at the positive side, the bright side of it, and know how much we're helping people and embrace modernizing a firm, embrace paperless processes, all that jazz. Well, yeah, and it probably seems like things are changing every single day for all of you. So not only do you have to embrace change, but it's like in your industry, you're like, how am I going to survive all this? And everything's changing from one minute to the next. And some of you might be experiencing scary times and for your clients, too. And then you have no idea. Well, how's it going to look on the other side of this? Like, it's just. It's scary from all angles, right? And then you've got these people who might be afraid that the pandemic will destroy their business, which, yeah, some of them have, but how can you be of value to your clients? And like you said, instead of fear change, embrace change. So let me share what Susie told me today about this. So Susie, you know, in the beginning of our conversation, she actually said she wasn't scared about anything. You know, I, I really want to thrive during this time. I'm, I'm not scared. I'm not any of that, Michelle. I'm like, oh, okay, really cool. That's awesome, you know, because I'm even scared at times. I'm like, I got a sales class starting next week, and I didn't have that in my projections. That came out of left field, you know, and it was so awesome, and I'm so happy. But then about 30 minutes later, Susie said, Michelle, you know what I'm really scared of? I'm like, oh, what? Because in my mind, I'm like, well, you shared earlier, you weren't. And I know, Susie, you're going to listen to this because you found me because of the podcast. So hopefully you're laughing right now. But she said, you know what it is? I'm scared to present a high price and send a bill to a client. And one of the questions I said, you know, like, well, how much longer do you want to keep doing that? Like, it's time to change. Because all of that and undercharging and negotiating and settling for prices based on what your clients think they can pay you you know, not truly they can afford everything, but you just giving in, it cost her almost 30,000 for this last year. And that's only what we got into in about an hour conversation. So it probably was a lot more, but there was fear around charging a lot. And my question back was, how can you become a million dollar firm if you have a fear about charging a lot? Because people with a million dollar firm like you, Jackie, who are selling tax plans and higher value services and coaching, you're expensive. You have a high price tag. You're valuable. So, you know, I, I shared with Susie, well, I'm definitely very expensive. I'm not cheap, you know, but do you want to keep shopping at food for less or do you want to go shop at, you know, Gelson's in California? You, you get to choose, but you have to kind of see yourself for that. And, you know, granted Susie, uh, overcame the fear and she's making a change. We're going to help her fix all this but for some of you that might be coming up and um yeah that's what I wanted to share yeah that's awesome that actually kind of leads into our number three item so the third thing to quit right now living in the past so I bet you your client was thinking about a negative experience they had in the past 
where they didn't set proper expectations up front. Yeah. And so it, it bit them in the bum on the back end, right? And someone probably went off on them or something like that. I mean, we all have tiny traumas from our past, whether we lived a perfect life or not. Um, I actually just finished a book called Personality Isn't Permanent by Dr. Hardy. And it is amazing read to help you kind of move past past experiences and refocus on your future. But, you know, we really have to think about the past as a learning experience. You know, every day with any negative thing that happens to us, how can we make tomorrow better from it? I actually was fired from the last accounting firm I worked at before I was pushed to start my own practice. And guess when I sit around regretting that ever, <laughs> never, never, you know what? And I have another new student. So if she's listening, we're just going to call her Barbara. Barbara got laid off during the pandemic and, you know, for an accounting firm. And she said, I've always wanted to start my own thing. And, you know, I'm really excited to to move forward and actually start my own firm. And I was like, well, what's a better time? And sometimes, you know, she lived in the past like, oh, I need to go get another job or you know, and this might be a little woo woo for some of you, but is this the universe telling me like, Hey, this is my time to actually make it happen. Just like you made it happen. I was fired at my job in college, Jackie. I don't know if I ever told you the story. And I was like, I was so bummed. Cause I made a lot of money in college. I actually made more money in college than I did at my first job out of college, which was at Moss Adams, the, co- the accounting firm. I made more there. And I was like, man, what am I going to do? I got to get out of Moss Adams. Like this is just not the cubicle life or, you know, for some of you who are in a job, you know what I mean? Corporate America wasn't for me. So again, it's all about living in our past. And my past was like, I can't believe I just got fired and I hope I don't get fired ever again in a future job. But then I did. For those of you that don't know, I was a fitness instructor and I got fired from teaching kickboxing and boxing, but I just don't think the general manager really liked me a whole lot because, <laughs> oh, it's their fault. <laughs> it was because here, get this. They, they rehired me when they had new owners. So I, I've always had a passion for fitness. Jackie knows that personally, but for those of you, I mean, I love working out. So I was like, well, might as well get paid to work out. So I would teach kickboxing, boxing, and spin class. Yeah. So they rehired me, but you, we can't keep thinking about our past all the time. We actually, like you shared, you know, bite it in the butt, I think you said, and just look at that as a way of a learning experience and how do we refocus for our future to learn from that experience. So, yeah, exactly. And so that actually goes hand in hand with our number four point. Oh, God. It's just like flowing. We're yeah, flowing it's like just, the river. It's the universe coming together for us today. <laughs> so number four is stop putting yourself down. You know, again, this really just all circles back to the value that you're placing on yourself. I actually was talking to a coaching student today that um, was doing exactly what your clients are doing, Michelle, which is giving away stuff for free. And then on the back end being like, I'm so scared. I can't ask for this $5,500 tax yeah. planning fee. And I was able to identify like 30 K of missed opportunities in fees for this one client that he was struggling with. Wow. Um, And he really just needed that confidence to say like, you are worth it. And this is normal for our our industry. Our clients pay us an onboarding fee, 20, 30 K plus sometimes and annual maintenance fees of over 10 grand for maybe a 1040 and like one business return. So, you know, we're not cheap and we have less than a hundred clients, but that's exactly how I designed it so that we can give the best experience to each and every one. And I have my flaws just like you do, Michelle. None of us are perfect, (laughs) but we got to focus on those strengths And, you know, really encouraging and lifting each other up in this profession. And I think really the Facebook group is probably the the best place to help yourself out as a listener today. Yeah, I would definitely uh, go check that out. Uh, What's it called? Accounting Firm Influencers. So we'll help lift you up if you're feeling down. (laughs) No, that's great. And I do have a story to share, too, because some of you might resonate with Susie. And to stop putting yourself down, but really put a price tag on yourself. And 
When you give away stuff for free, let me share with you a few things she was giving away for free so you can go look at your business today and be like, oh my God, okay, <laughs> you know, and you could put a stop to at least one or two of them. But she has a monthly bookkeeping clients. I don't even know what she's charging for the recurring right now, but all she wanted to charge was $250 a month. So if she even got $250 times five clients times 12 months, that's $15,000 of revenue just laying in an office because she has some empty office space and she wants to scale it and grow it. I'm like, imagine $15,001 bills just piled up. That's what's just sitting there because we're not taking a stand. Now, um, Susie, your prices will definitely be a little higher than that after working with me, but just to get it to that point, we also identified she probably gave away one whole week of uh, answering people's questions for free at 40 hours. So she put a price tag on that and it came out to about $6,000 of free information. And she's a contributor in her community, like teaches and other things. So it's like, I pick and choose where I'm going to contribute. I contribute here with all of you listening, right? Jackie's contributing her time right now. But then there's a, there's a line in the sand you have to draw that says, okay, now you're going overboard. Now you get to pay. <laughs> Another thing in an area that I thought was really interesting are, you know, how your clients get these like notices or letters from the IRS. And you all know I'm not a CPA accountant, nothing. I just work with you all. But I hate I hate those letters. They freak me out and they give me panic attacks and anxiety. So if you were my CPA, you could probably charge me for reading that letter to me just to calm me down. But a lot of you aren't even charging for even those. And I know it's small. But I mean, even on a hundred clients, right? If we just take Jackie's situation and you charge, you know, a hundred dollars a letter and every single client of yours eventually got a letter and that's what you charge to just review the letter with your clients so they don't freak out and we understood what it was because it's never written in English. That's like Japanese to someone like me. You have to understand you are all very special and knowledgeable and know a lot of stuff that I don't know. I'm like, thank God I have a friend like Jackie. Thank God I have all my smart clients. Like, this is awesome. I am in good hands. If I have a problem, I know who to call. And then they say, oh, Michelle, well, you told us we can't do anything for free. And it's going to cut, you know. And then I'm like, oh, God. But you get my point. There's, there's the things that you keep doing out of habit, right? So if we go back to... Item number three, living in the past out of habit. Number two, fearing change. It's like, yeah, out of habit, you keep just doing all this stuff at a donation department uh, rate, which is zero. So we realized, um, you know, for Susie, she had, I think, 15 clients get notices recently. So even if she charged 50 bucks, 100 bucks, I know it's small, but every small little thing adds up to a lot. So right there was $700 to $1,500 that she was just doing pro bono. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. Yeah. It's interesting how much you we might actually be putting ourselves down in our minds without even recognizing it throughout the day. And so it's important to kind of capture those thoughts mm -hmm. and then spin them in a different direction. Like I did a horrible job in that meeting today. Really like I, by the way, I have four coaches right now, which Michelle is not one of my paid coaches, but I consider her a good friend. So, you know, we're, we'll just barter back and forth that way, but I am obsessed with coaching. And one of them was teaching me how to kind of like grab onto those negative thought processes and twist them into a different way by saying like, what if, so what if that meeting was just fine? You know, it's not an absolute, whatever you're telling yourself is not necessarily the truth. And so I would just challenge people listening today to try to like capture that negative stuff. Cause it will, you know, accrue up in you and, and really end up hurting you if you don't figure out a way to spin it and turn things into the positive. Yeah. And I, I mean, it goes to show that you've invested in yourself too, in, into four coaches. That's a lot of coaching. God, that must be overwhelming. But it's an area that maybe you want to improve on, right? That four step, not putting ourself down. And, and I think also coming from the place of that I am a client of all of yours, all of us are clueless, okay? <laughs> Especially with everything that happened in 2020. 
I can't read any of that and understand it. I need a translator. That's like learning Taiwanese. You know, it, it's like you got to have people like you and you get to, you know, pay for it. It, It's not that. And people have a lot of money right now. No one's traveling. Their businesses, their expenses are down. I was actually talking to a friend who his business expenses are typically double of what they're at because right now. Because they're not traveling. There's no eating out like it was. There's no plane tickets, hotels. So if you think about it, most of your clients actually have more cash in the bank. So now is a prime opportunity to start practicing and asking for higher fees and missed opportunities and all that pro bono work and just starting to have those conversations only after you put a value on your on your worth and you. Well, you got to put a price tag on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. And then add and Jackie, you should add those four coaching uh, coaches, I mean, that you invested in to your full MBA program, I call it. So that's like your CPA, your investments and other CPE credit things and all of the stuff that creates your knowledge where you can say, I am we offer the best tax strategies. Right. That was a bold statement. But with all of the stuff that you have behind you, that's great. Like I can say I provide the best sales training with a lot of confidence because I'm like you. I invest in more things to I'm always trying to learn something new, even though I haven't learned a whole ton new. But I always find one little nugget somewhere along the way. And in my in my recent training, I don't know if I told you this, I'm doing some volunteer work and I'm helping on the suicide hotline. Oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. I'm volunteering every week now. And it's really good training for me to help all of you learn those skills, too, because you probably don't have the time to volunteer for something like that. And it takes a certain kind of person because it's kind of crazy, the stuff you hear. But, yeah, I'm always looking to up level myself in order to up level all of you. So, OK, I went off tangent. I went off tangent. I'm so That's sorry. OK, no, oh. I think. You know, really, these five things to quit are for anybody, whether they're an accountant or not. And it's probably good refreshers for you to tell people that might be calling in on that hotline, too, because we, we all struggle with these things every day. Yes. Well, the hotline, it's a very special struggle. It's very interesting. But at the end of the day, if, if I could share one thing with you, and I know that we're talking about you know, you're a listener in a client relationship, right? You're the person listening. And I'm the listener with someone who's having an emotional crisis. Every single person needs three things. They want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to be understood. So if you eliminate these five little things we're talking about, they're not little, they're actually really big. Then then your, your future client, your current clients will feel all those three things. And then you have long-term relationship client bliss. Okay, what's the fifth thing? Okay, number five is our worst offender as accountants, and it is overthinking. So with us accountants being big uh, thinker types and learners and educators and whatnot, we tend to remunerate over the same concept over and over and over again and never actually implement anything. And I've struggled with that just like any other accountant. That's why coaching I think is so vital is to get you to kind of snap out of that. But, you know, I used to get paralyzed with some of these decisions about, you know, small changes that I wanted to make my practice to my family, to my life. And I realized how vital it is to really just limit the amount of time that you have to make a decision. So if you have a big decision coming up, give yourself a deadline. Like I'm going to spend 45 minutes on this topic. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to go with my gut, talk to other people as needed, of course. And then, but then just do it, you know, stop overthinking, start doing And that's how you're going to have a a thriving practice, a successful practice, and, you know, a really wonderful life, really. Yeah, no, and I I mean, I got Susie today. This is so timely. This this couldn't have been a timelier podcast episode here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast because Susie is now on track for abundance. 
But yeah, she was her worst offender. I mean, overthinking. She got the E-Myth book for accountants. She uh, is doing all these webinars and CPEs and, you know, just overwhelmed and spinning on like a hamster wheel over and over again. And, you know, she even told me, she's like, I'm maxed out. I'm like, I get it. And when you are not paralyzed anymore is when you get accountability. And I think that's what I provide to people. That's what Jackie provides to people. But what you're saying about the deadline, Jackie, is that's for yourself, right? And that's how you can stop overthinking is giving yourself a deadline. So it's so funny because with Susie today, you know, I give a deadline if you want to work with me. Like you should either know it's yes or no. It's pretty simple because otherwise you're going to overthink and overthink and, oh, should I do it now? Or you're going to have all those thoughts that are going to be the things that actually are holding you back from what you want to be doing right now, right? Because you are your worst offender, right? So you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, I want to try doing this more on my own right now, and I don't want to hire anyone to help. Or you might be thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to invest in this book that I'm never going to read because if I invest in this, I can actually make money and grow and do the things that I want to do. Or you might be thinking, you know what? I can't remember the other thing I was going to say, but (laughs) I was like on a total tangent roll, but I I got stuck in the moment. But those are all thoughts that maybe you're thinking right now. And that is the stuff that actually stops you, you know, you figuring it out on your own or or the worst one. The worst one ever I always hear is, you know what, I think I'm going to just do it later. Do you want to know how long I've been doing this, you guys? I've been teaching accountants how to sell for a few years, create sales processes without being pushy, salesy, sleazy, all that. Uh, Yesterday in my class, Jackie, two of the women actually said, oh my God, it actually felt natural. That was fun. (laughs) It's like going to the gym, the getting to the gym part sucks. But then when you're at the gym and you're actually doing the exercises, you're like, oh, that actually feels pretty good. So this Mm -hmm. process- I actually thought of you the other day, Michelle, because I had gotten to that point with my coaching program where it's just kind of effortless with the sales process. And I thought back on you telling me that like a couple of years ago that, you know, sales should be fun. This should be effortless. I was yeah. like, oh, yay, I'm finally at that point. Go me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's great. Right. But all of those thoughts are actually what is, is the, like, it's self-sabotage. And it's the fear that moves you into these indecisive, indecision type thoughts. And that's what paralyzes you. Right. waste of time to overthink. Yeah. You're literally prioritizing nonsense and worry over actually like efficient processes to get things done. Yeah. What do you have a story like Jackie, when you overthought something and you paralyzed yourself and you know, you were just doing the over and over and over again. And you're like, oh my God, I'm going to stop it. And now you look back and you're like, shoot, I wasted a ton of money or I got, I lost a whole year. Do you have like one specific one? Well, I would say with implementing value pricing, you know, I went five to six years, even though I said earlier in this podcast that it took me three years to kind of realize it, it then took me another three years to actually get it done. But once I had converted from, you know, from traditional fixed fee billing or hourly billing at my firm to value pricing, I looked back and I was like, why didn't I do this so much earlier? It was just spinning in my head like, oh, well, I need to fix this tiny little detail or what do I do if this happens? And it doesn't matter. You just need to go for it and then fix the problems as they come up because it was just so life changing to actually make that change in the firm. Yeah. I, and I get it. So that was the six year, uh, stretch. And I'm, I'm sure some of you listening have had long ones longer, 10 years trying to quit, you know, like you've been wanting to quit that job. Like the other woman, I don't remember what name I made up for. We'll call her Barbara right now, but Barbara, you know, like always want to start her own firm and, and do this and, and really dive deep on like this tax stuff you're talking about. And, it took the firm to her, for her to get fired or laid off because of what happened in 2020. That was the tipping point for her. You know, so how can you create that for yourself now so you don't have to waste six years like Jackie did and probably a lot of money left on the table? 
But yeah, thanks for sharing. Is there anything else, Jackie? Do you have a sixth one that came up in your mind or we covered the five? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that probably gives a lot for people to chew on. I would just say that, you know, that's why I developed the concierge CPA coaching program is to give you exactly how I converted to value pricing so that you don't have to go through that six year struggle that I did. And so, you know, highly would recommend people check out the program if you're interested in doing that, especially around tax strategies. And then also my third uh, company that I mentioned right now is a brand new tax planning application that I'm creating called taxplaniq.com. And it's actually letting you visualize the ROI that you're giving clients when you're quoting them tax strategies and implementing the tax strategies. And so I'm hoping that's going to take a lot of this overthinking weight off of people's (laughs) shoulders by sharing these kind of new innovative ideas and products. But yeah, if anyone wants to reach out, I'd be happy to chat with people uh, about any of their current struggles. My email address is cpa at myertax.com. Cool. And if you had it, because I always want to know, there's fives a lot. If you had to choose one thing to change today that you wish you would have done, you know, whatever, 10 years ago, I know you've been doing this a decade, six years trying to get to value pricing, blah, blah. What's the one important one of what we talked about today out of the five that you think someone needs to tackle like right now, right when they're done listening to us in about 30 seconds? Is it, you know, trying to please everyone, fearing change, living in the past, putting yourself down or the overthinking? Which one out of the five for the accountants listening right now would you say is the most top one to tackle? Okay, so I'm really torn between trying to please everyone and overthinking. But at the end of the day, we I have to pick overthinking. <laughs> the time waste and the time suck of that is just enormous. I mean, you're probably looking at hour to two hours a day of overthinking versus doing yeah. that could could like substantially change someone's practice in life. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for being here with us today on the Abundant Account Podcast. It was an honor to have you again. Of course. Thank you so much. What an amazing episode with Jackie. So much goodness. And, you know, the top thing she says for you, and this is from the CPA hat, is to stop overthinking today. I am super grateful I do not have the overthinking problem. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you today if I overthought the podcast. I actually have a really funny story about this because when I first started my other podcast, which is called Success Unfiltered, where I interview uh, entrepreneurs that are service-based, product-based, a Shark Tank vet. For those of you that forgot, maybe I uh, pitched on Shark Tank season four. You know, I started that and everyone was telling me, Michelle, you don't know what you're doing. You've never had a podcast. What do you know about podcasting? What do you know about interviewing people? Blah, blah, blah. And if I would have overthought all of that feedback and input, I probably would not be here today. And, you know, in October of what? That's 2018. So almost two years ago, I started this podcast. And this has been a great tool for a lot of you. I hear it all the time. So if you have a quick second, please do leave me a written review and a rating on Apple podcast. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, click that subscribe button. I also love hearing from you and reading the reviews. And one last thing before I let you go, if you are, you know, frustrated and stressed trying to get those right clients and you feel like you just don't have control over who you work with and what you're charging and you feel like you're on that cash flow roller coaster ride, I do have a solution for you. And you can join me at my accountant's masterclass over at theabundantaccountant.com so you can learn how to feel confident positioning yourself as an expert. Really get those consistent, high value quality clients and have more people say yes to paying you what you're worth. Just like Jackie, she's charging 20 to 30,000 per client now. So no matter how much you charge, it is possible. It's completely complimentary for my masterclass. Again, visit theabundantaccountant.com to register. Just a friendly reminder, today's episode was brought to us by On The Clock. On The Clock is a web-based time tracking software providing accuracy and time theft prevention 
and compliance assistance to over 30,000 customers. And they've been around since 2004. So those of you that never tried them or heard of them, if you are doing accounting services and bookkeeping services, let On The Clock do the selling of your services for you. And here's how you do it. Number one, get a free account. Number two, you'll become a certified in their software in about less than two hours. You will then be listed as a trusted pro on their marketplace page, giving their over 10,000 active customers visibility to you and your services, aka a lead source for you. So those of you looking for leads, sign up today for a free account. Ontheclock.com, expand your business, save time with your client's payroll information because it's all in one place. And you'll be able to provide discounts on the software to your clients that they would have never otherwise ever got access to. So give it a try. Check them out. Give them a call. They're awesome. Ontheclock.com. And I will see you on the next episode.